But then I think Autumn's an awesome example. Started late. And I do remember even when you were getting recruited, Roz calling me. I'm like, so what do you think? And I'm like, it's kind of like, oh, well, her skills are still a little rough. But I said, the most coachable person, the most enthusiastic person. You know, like, in, in, you're very fast. But there are burners out. You know, you're not. And I'm, well, the one thing when I talk to coaches, I'm like Miss Factual Actual. So I think they actually do think I'm honest because maybe they might be too critical. So, but, but it's the attitude and the desire to learn and the cost management. And I think Annie's benefit, like, I'm going to embarrass you now. I see when you play, you bring a lot of that too. Because when you see some of these players that have risen up, you see them on the field with their team and they keep that positivity. And I don't think either of you, it's not artificial. You can't fake. You know, a high five your teammate, or after a try, still chasing down. And like, it's fun for me now because I've known Autumn all these years, and I'll be with Co. Like, I was actually during the PR Sevens draft, I was with uh, Josie and Emily and like Dowdy and a couple of them, and like the Autumn's name came up. Like, oh, we love Autumn. I'm like, yay, because that's Western New York. And it's funny for those of you who play for other teams, like, I'm sometimes a little bit cold and aloof and rude, but it's mostly because I'm like awkward. And I am loyal to my orange park team. But then at the next level, it's all Western York. So I'm like, I get as excited about Autumn doing well, because that's like us, that's our crew. So and then just because I did put the spotlight on you, can you just share the incredible things, like what the things we talked about over there that you have going on in the next, let's say, six months? And this is just an example of where rugby can take you. Okay, so the next, uh, well, tomorrow I leave to go to Texas to go play in a tournament out there just for fun, like with my friends. And then um, I'll go back to Georgia and I'll finish my master's degree. March, but before I finish, I'll finish online because at the end of February, I'm going to go to Japan and play in Japan for three months um, and travel around Japan. Professionally. Like, yeah, like play professionally, have a contract, you know, get paid, all those fun things. Um, and then I'll come back here playing PR7 and probably come represent the U.S. full time, hopefully. And, so, and Autumn has just played for the Falcons, which is there's the Eagle Sevens, which are, you know, the top team, the Falcons is the next level. So it's like players aspiring to be on like the next Olympic team. You were just in Dubai. Yeah, the just in Dubai with the USA Falcons. I've been to a few camps, and he's been to a few camps with me. Um, just like, I mean, I've gotten to travel so many places. I mean, Dubai was just like the most recent, but over the summer I did a few 23 stuff in Brazil. Um, with I Emily, just playing, yeah, you got yeah. to play both the. With Emily, and then I've been to camps at Chula all the time. And like, at my life team, we travel all over the place between like Washington, California, Missouri. I probably visited like a lot of the states right now. Just just through my college team, not even any extra stuff. So yeah, I've been all over the place. And it's gotten me two degrees through college, which is really important to me because you know, everyone always says like rugby's not forever and if you don't have if something does happen, always have something to back up on. So I've got two degrees almost and I'll probably go for a third. Um, plus I have like a really, really good job that I actually can make money and do what I want to do and a huge resume. So that's just some of the stuff that I mean I get more into later, but yeah, that's kind of my journey. Which again, I think it's cool because it was a little bit later. Like you weren't in the U18 pool. No, so I, got like, 20, you know, it's I remember playing like my junior year. I was a dancer, like a competitive dancer. I was a ballerina. I did it all. And then my junior year, a bunch of my friends were playing. And everyone was like, you won't. You can't do that. You're a dancer. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So my junior year, I started. No college wanted me. I can guarantee that. But I just emailed every college I possibly could because I wanted to go play rugby somewhere. And I wanted to play at a high level. So even though I might not have been like the best rugby player, I wasn't at those camps that everyone else was at, or like I wasn't even getting looked at until I emailed people. Like I just took the chance to email a bunch of schools that I was interested in that had the like stuff that I wanted, and eventually some of them emailed back. I got to go to a few camps, and people started offering me not great scholarships, but a scholarship, which was enough for me to want to go there. And then from there, I didn't play like at all my freshman year, maybe at all my sophomore year, and then COVID hit, and then I. Eventually started to play like the big games my junior senior year, but yeah, I wasn't anywhere near the level I am now until probably my junior year of college, which is crazy to think. But which is, I mean, it's such a good story for us coaches to tell people. It's not like you have to, because yeah, there's some people's first practice, they're superstars. I mean, you obviously have all the physical gifts, but it is just that you can get, and that's why rugby is so great, because you can just get better and better and better and better and better, you know, which is so cool. You know, like, I love, it's such a great story. So, um, we have other. I, I don't want to be the MC, You're but the I think MC. I will You're become the MC. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I think because Autumn just went. So we don't remember. Does anyone else have questions for Autumn? I guess since like you didn't start off that like at the like U18, like 
like USA and camps and all, like how did you like work like work up to that point and like get better? I think it's kind of just like finding coaches that believed in you. I think luckily like I went to a university that had a coach that like was like, I think this is what she, I told my coach my goals and you know, even though they were unrealistic at the time, I think like I was like, this is where I wanna be. I wanna play in the Olympics. Or I wanna play um, in the World Series. And my coach was like, all right, this is what you need to do. And like once I started getting better, she started putting my name more out there. And like I still just have coaches that continue to back me. So I think just finding those people that are willing to put your name out there and willing to get you to one camp, right? And then if you're prepared for that one camp and like you just keep doing your thing, they'll invite you more, right? But like I think it's just finding that one person to believe in you and put your name out there. Because I, I don't think it was anything other than that. I think like, and I played in every opportunity. That's another thing. I did yeah. every opportunity. So even if it was like, Club Sevens Nationals, I was gonna go with a random team, but they needed someone and they needed an extra player. I was always the first one to be like, let me go, let me go. I remember you went to Barbados and play, like basically played with each team. Yeah, I played with <laughs> Barbados because the team needed so someone, and I was like, yeah, I'll go. And then I didn't end up playing with the team I went for, but I played with the teams that needed me. And like, even though <coughs> I might not have been the best player, I think all that stuff kind of got my name out there and willing, mm -hmm. like showed that I was willing to put the time in and willing to take the time out of my like years of like, school and whatnot to go to these things. Um, but yeah, just every opportunity, even if it was a camp and I didn't think I was ready, just going out, being adaptable, being coachable, I think we were really put my I remember even this senior spring, you still had to play some, but I remember you, like, because I remember these, because I remember you played with Morris and New York Sevens. Yep. And that was like kind of random, I'm like, oh cool, Autumn's here. That's like random. And you got hurt. I remember. Yeah, I just like, I remember, before. I can remember rugby stuff, I can't remember, like. <laughs> literally though, so I got picked for one step, I got picked for one sevens tournament with the New Jersey team and I, it was just my coach at the time was like, she wants more opportunities, they needed a player, I went and then I built that connection so I was able to find, like they, she started inviting me to everything so even though I got hurt and I only put like one name, yeah. he invited me to the next one and I was able to like, that's where I actually ended up getting Las Vegas sevens was that where I ended up getting recruited for life, um, the college that I'm at now. So like literally just every opportunity, like even this opportunity that I'm leaving for tomorrow, I was just like, hell yeah, I want to play more rugby, I need to get better, I need reps, so definitely just taking every opportunity. Mm -hmm. Even like opportunities like this, just learning about like the sport and like learning from people that are better than you or that people that have experienced different experiences, I think it's just key to getting better and getting better as a human. And just a better human. I'm gonna follow Autumn said if she reached out to a million teams. Like Annie got heavily recruited because she sent an email and filled out an interest form for every team. Like there's a little bit, I was saying before, there's a little bit of this you know, fairy tale that coaches come out of the blue and will email you, no, they probably won't. You know, like you need to fill out information, you know, go online, fill out every player you go. Eat. Like Annie was saying, like, if you're gonna be at a tournament and you know, coaches are gonna be there, like I'm gonna be playing for this team, I'm gonna play this day, I'm gonna work, you know, like you have to do how, what percent like? Yeah, like most of the time, I feel like you need to reach out before they reach out to you. So you because player, because coaches, like there's a million people who have like a similar skill level. So you need to show that you're really interested and show your unique talents, and they will notice you unless you like put yourself out there. Yeah, because I mean, there is that illusion that because yeah, I have I've played forever, so I know people. But your whole recruiting was really just you putting yourself out there. Just lots of emails, lots of lots of emails, and like you know. And as, as someone who like helps with that stuff now, because that's kind of my right. life. Um, like I help with recruitment, I help with all that stuff. Like even if you just reach out on social media, like you slide up on someone's Instagram page, like it happens to us all the time. Like our coach will always email back. He'll be the or one that the, he'll DM you back. He'll literally mm -hmm. DM you back and be like, "This is me. Let's have like send me a resume, send me whatever. Let's just set up a phone call. Like even if it's through social media, like which mm -hmm. is such a big tool for you guys nowadays, like go for it. I highly recommend it because even if you show up there with no scholarship, like you can continue to improve to get that starting spot or reach whatever goal you want. So use social media, you guys have that. I would suggest that you research the programs and the schools that have what you want to study. Let's not forget that that's the most important part of it. Mm -hmm. Like, like uh, rugby, rugby right. experience is fantastic, but find the schools that have what you want to study, that you'll be comfortable with, and that you like, you know, and then reach out to all of them, all of them. And we can, if you don't know the contact information, coaches, Matt, and Lisa and I, if we don't already know them, which we probably do, we'll find them. That's what we did. 
me and Lexi. Oh, I have Lexi. Lexi, Lexi I have like, okay, we got to write a letter. I'll proofread it. Then we'll go over it. And then I'm like, okay, here is every coach's email yeah, that no, I could I find. Like that pick the schools you're at. Like, what <laughs> have what you want, and we'll just send everything. Mm -hmm. At some point, maybe it's a good idea to have a form letter that we have that people can adjust and use to share with all the kids. Remember like, last I don't year, I made up that never fake, a form letter. I made up that fake letter. letter. Yeah. yeah. My name is Sue. Like, I wrote a fake letter for my team. Like, my name's Susie. I just started playing as a sophomore, but I love the sport. I'm, you know, just kind of have it. So, like, how did you end up at Plymouth? Yeah. Uh, well, first I played for Sydney Otter, Sydney mm -hmm. Otters. Um, and it took me a while. Like I sent out a bunch of emails, did all the questionnaires, Instagrams, everything. Like also, that. you were done. You were also in the heart of the COVID. The COVID yeah. crew got had a really hard road. Yeah. yeah. Um, but basically, um, I didn't get into any other colleges. And one of the other places was like my last. Like it's either here or you're staying home. Um, and I ended Not up a bad. Not them. a bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, I ended up sending them an email and. Um, they got back to me, and then we started the whole recruiting process. Um, and yeah, I just signed. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the recruitment process is very, I don't know, it's like, oh, I just want this to happen. Like, it's so long, like months. But um, other, I also like, one thing I would suggest is like putting together like a highlight video, because like coaches like to look at that. Yeah. No, you can never send it. Like, the coach that I've talked to, I really only talk to the darkest ones because I see them a lot. And, like, you can't send them too much stuff. Yeah. Like, they're never going to be like, I have too much stuff. You know, like, because like, they're, they're so busy, all these coaches, that if you make it easier for them, it makes it easier for them. Yeah. Another thing yeah. where it's like Quinnipiac varsity program, yeah. they, because they're an NCAA varsity program, they have a whole set of extra rules they mm -hmm. have to follow the yeah. group that the non-varsity teams right. don't have to follow. And again, that's one of those things I wish I could better advise because I'm not even really familiar. I know they're like the dates, they can't make an offer until after like 10, 15 or sophomore year. Sophomores, they can talk to parents. Parents, but not the players. Juniors, then they can talk to the players. And then right? My dad just come up to me and they're like, who's this? I'm like, oh, I'll introduce you. They're like, please don't. Well, well, yeah. And uh, it's only right. in tournaments, they can't. Right. So I said did the same thing. I don't remember where we were. I'm like, go ahead and talk to you. I can't. I can't. Like, just like, like, what's the name? Like, like, yeah. Let them know that I know about them. Yeah, I've had that for several, and it's it's very tricky. Yeah. So if it's a varsity school you're interested in, there's a lot of rules. And then, then, then when you play, because remember I was like, do you want to buy a Super Bowl square? You're like, yeah, exactly. I don't know if that counts for I'm gonna play, play, I don't want a violation. And like at Dartmouth, I'm an alum, and I'm a parent, but I can be at a tournament, like if one of my boys' friends wants like a Gatorade or like, <laughs> if I have like a Dartmouth hat, like it's really weird what I can represent and say because there's the different roles because I'm on the alumni board. Like it's it's so the NCAA stuff is cool, bro. And then if like, right. you want to play with another club, like I don't want to play in the summertime, you should get a waiver from the NCAA to play summer rugby and somebody else. So, yeah. There's a lot of rules for those clubs. Ella, how did you end up at UNH? Um, so UNH is the only NCAA program that I was looking at. Um, other than that, I was looking at more club teams, but I did, I definitely was interested in more of the varsity rugby aspect. Um, so in, I was emailing with the uh, coach record there. Um, she was talking to my dad before that too, just about, because he was contacting all the different coaches and stuff. Um, I started talking to her, we got her um, looking at the huddle, all the videos and stuff like that, which is so helpful to mm -hmm. have the resources that OB has with recording all our games and stuff. Um, and I know City Honors uh, does some of theirs too. But um, so she looked at video and stuff. I ended up going in September, my senior year, on a visit. And I like fell in love with the campus. Um, I met the team. It was only, that was the first year that they were a team. We're now on our third year. Um, so everyone there was on the team for like a week. All the players and stuff. But I fell in love with everyone on the team and stuff too. They're all like my best friends now. Really, from the visit, I kind of knew that's where I wanted to go. So by November, I signed and everything there. Um, yeah. Okay, how did you end up at LA? So I reached out. And we're doing like we're trying to doing the life, then Naira. No one's going to send the club. 
I reached out to pretty much every coach there was. I talked to pretty much every coach. I sent them highlight reels. I sent them full game footage so they could see how I messed up and came back from it. Which is also something that they say they want to see also how you respond to your teammates, how you respond to disappointment, how you respond to your coach. And so that is into upper Which that. coaches did mention that they really liked seeing because not a lot of other people said that. Mm -hmm. Another thing that was really important is to bring up, is to just keep in contact with them and be really persistent so you don't fall off the radar. Um, I really like the aspect of helping build a team from the ground up, which is what Long Island University gave me the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. They've had a lot of coach turnover, but I saw it as a chance to be like a clean slate, help build something for people to come after me, mm -hmm. which is not something you get on a lot of different minor programs. Well, I think it's interesting both, you acknowledge, you're both so established and like have such a like deep rugby resume, so the value you probably brought to your coaches at the college programs, so it wasn't like, you know, it's so much experience. Yeah. Then. And then I got to do really cool things, like I got invited to play in Tropical Sevens mm -hmm. my senior year for COVID hit, and then I got to go play with the 23 All-Stars in the National Showcase mm -hmm. last summer because I got invited to that from them, which was really cool. And then I have other teams that have given me the opportunity to play with them in Tampa this year after I graduated, which is really cool, mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have been able to have if I didn't put myself out there and reach out to these coaches mm -hmm. and have the skills developed for these varsity programs and all the different coaches. This is the high school, I'm with the high schoolers. So, how did, so talk about U of R, how did that? Um, I go to University of Rochester, um, I'm a junior there right now. Uh, when I was a junior in high school, that's when I started reaching out to schools, but that's when COVID was for me, and I know for a lot of people that's like really the time of coming here. Um, and also City Honors School didn't really have a whole lot of film equipment at the time, so I didn't have a whole lot of film going into it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have like this crazy resume for all the schools that I reached out to. Um, so ultimately I didn't get any of the graduate schools that I wanted to, um, but I played the University of Rochester um, and I played for the club team there, their NCR, small college. Um, and when I first got into it, I was kind of disappointed because I wouldn't get be playing at that level that I wanted to. But honestly, I don't think that I would change anything given the opportunity now. I really like playing at the club level. Like it's not as intense as I might want it, but I can kind of make it as intense as I want it to be. Um, and then I also have a lot of opportunities from there just because I have such, a, as I was saying, such a big rugby resume prior to them compared to all the people that are going into the program. I like showed up to the first practice and automatically I was like the most experienced person there like as a freshman. You were the captain. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I had a lot of experience going into it, which I think is really good for our program. And we're not like the best team in the world, but we do have a lot of fun. And I think that the opportunities that I've been given through the club program have really been so right now I'm captaining the women's team and I'm coaching the men's team at U of R, which is huge. Um, and so I feel like, yeah. So I feel like coming to U of R, I don't regret any of it. I don't regret playing at the club level. I think it's really respectable if you're playing at the varsity level, but you do know that you don't have to do that in order to do things with rugby, um, which is a really important to know. I feel like, so. It is funny, different programs, so I'm just like in my brain. Because like, so obviously I assume the men's and women's teams have a decent relationship at U of R if you're coaching. Mm -hmm. We kind of fell apart, the men's team kind of fell apart last year just because they had issues with their coach, and so that's why I stepped up. And so they didn't have their program at all last year, and this year we were really rebuilding. Um, and so now our relationship is starting to get better. No, because it is interesting because someone like City Honors not having a guy's counter for, you know, it is just a different vibe because, like, life is pretty good, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, we're like best friends with our guys' team. They come up like some, some really, some relationships are too close. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, with Angie's mom. Oh, yeah. And Angie's <laughs> uncle was my favorite coach of all time. Oh, so I was like, why did you play this fall? Yeah, a little too close. But no, <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things I liked about life too, was like the community, and I think that's just as important. Like, I love that we're here to talk about rugby, but like my big heart when I was going to college was like picking somewhere that like fit my values and fit what I wanted. And like part of it, like I just wanted a group of people that would like be able to surround me when I was a thousand miles away from home. And like I think that's just as important. Like I think she brings some great point is that when you're looking at colleges, make sure that you're looking at the environment, how big the college is, do they have your degree, do they have like the type of people that you want to surround yourself with? Do they do they have like a area that you like? Like I think all of like, yeah, rugby's all very fine and you can find incredible rugby programs everywhere, but like you're not gonna find incredible schools that fit all your goals unless you look at some big figure out like that long list of like what you want and like the community that you want to try. Now what's your major? Um, I have a so my undergraduate degree, my What's one of your yeah, <laughs> sports health science. But that's another thing that's tough about life if you don't have a lot of degrees. 
and so that's what makes it so like niche. The mm -hmm. niche school for sure. But yeah, lots of science and chiropractic. So if anyone wants to be a chiropractor, if you have a chiro if you ever go to the chiropractor, if you look at the diploma on the wall, I bet it's it's life or Palmer. Yeah. Or Palmer. Life or Palmer. But and and what's, uh, Ella, what's yours? Mechanical engineering. Again, niche. What are you guys all mean? What are your majors? Just so? I'm brain and science. I'm biology. Um, <laughs> oh, relations. Okay. Yeah, so it is. It's interesting. A lot of the girls are devoted to talking about that. Like, so she wants to go further in Lincoln until the ever lost in one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The downside, you know, the upside, she'll be your, your manager one of these days. So. And I think so, Jeanette, Emily, because Youth on Rights Club. Yeah. You want to talk about that and how you made that decision? Um, and so I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go to college. I knew I wanted to go to nursing, but just, I didn't know where I wanted to go yet. So I went, I took a gap year, and I went straight to club with some of the women's rugby. And um, I was kind of training with them with my sister from like a young age. I was started in like middle school, just going to practices and being their defense. So I already had like a connection with the team. And um, I just started playing with them, and it was really, really cool. We had a really good season, so we I, we got to travel to Chicago for regionals, and now we in May are going to Denver for super regionals. So, yeah. Where do you go? I think we're South Buffalo. Yeah. Okay. And my next question. So we talked about like kind of the recruiting element. What had you wished you were doing? to prepare rugby-wise, if you knew for college. But had you wished, you could tell, if you could talk to junior yourself, I'll start with like, what would you have told junior yourself to do differently, to get ready to, and that would purely on rugby. Okay, so my first thing, it will be rugby-wise, but I wanna say um, your health, um, that's something that I struggle with, like, and I didn't realize how, like, being at the division one level, um, that it will be like that. Like we get fitness tested like every week. We do like the Bronco. Um, get some, get some try, try the Bronco. <laughs> 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 uh, we do um, the mile in the beginning of preseason. Um, it's basically just all fitness te testing in preseason. So that's just something that you want to be ready for. Um, and then school wise, I want to say like yeah. procrastination is like my biggest thing. And it, it really like, mess me up my first semester, but I would say you need to like use your resources. So like if you have academic advisors, athletic advisors, they will help you um, set up like tutoring, stuff like that. And then another thing is like make time in your schedule to study because like even though you really be like, oh, this is easy. Like I'm going to get an A on this test or hard. Mm -hmm. And you guys have like teen study halls at all or anything? Um, so like our first, First years, they are required to do six hours of study hall in the fall. You have to do it every week. Um, and then, if you have, if you have, I think it's like if you have lower than a 2.8 GPA, then you have to continue study hall until you get your GPA back up. And which is really nice. Like it's on Zoom, so it's not like you're in a room or without your phone or your or your laptop. Um, but there's lots and lots of resources, and I definitely encourage everyone. Okay, I wish I would have known about like the school rugby balance because I took 18 credits every semester, so I took the max load, and I didn't realize how hard that would be <laughs> until it was really, really hard. I think the message is coming. It's almost like it's almost the like academics is harder than the rest. Like yeah. you worry about that, and I'm the first one to say like I college kicked my butt freshman fall. Like I thought I was so smart, and it was like humbling. So yeah, it's, humbling. it's actually no. It's funny how the sport like you think sports are is like oh no, I sports are really like the easiest part of college. Yeah, yeah, no, which is funny here, it's like varsity sports yeah. and it's the academics that. Like my different coaches did study halls differently. My first coach did all freshmen had to have study halls every week. And then if you had a certain GPA or higher, you didn't have to do them. And then my second coach um, had <coughs> weekly study halls for everybody. The third coach broke us up into our, we have like a tree system with a big and little for each grade, mm. which I personally really like about my school. And we would have our own tree study hall, so it wouldn't be a big group where everybody was like disorganized and not doing their work. It'd be a small group where you could be like, hey, get back on track. And accountability. And accountability. Yeah. And another thing I really wish that I knew about college is make friends outside of your team. Like your team is your friends, they're your family. We'll do this. But it's really important <laughs> to make friends that 
aren't your teammates. Mm -hmm. Like some of my best friends are on the golf team, or were on the golf team, they were on the tennis team, they were on other sports, mm -hmm. which was really great to have an outlet. Sometimes you need a little bit of space from your family, so sometimes you need a little bit of space from your team. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good point. For you, we like don't have like study bus at our play. And I hate it. <laughs> um, but we like build our own community within like the club aspect. Like we only practice twice a week, but on the weekends we'll like rent out a room in the library. And be like okay, everyone come and just like hang out. Like, do you want to do homework or not? Um, and that's like really good to like, keep on track. Um, and the other thing I would say is, um, come come back. Add one more thing. study hall, um, freshmen is required, and everyone, I think it's, our school, like, our, my coach is very strict with study hall, it, you need like a 3.5 to not be in study hall. So most people are there, um, and it's split a little bit, so they do have like, sit in a room, the whole team, study hall together, because some people work better with a little bit of noise, or with a little, like, working with someone, and then there's also like, individual where you sign in on like an app and do it that way. It's also just very important to like make a routine and stick to it. It's really helpful just to know what you're doing when um, and setting times to eat because sometimes you forget to eat like a lot just because you're busy. Don't think about things. You have to play it in time sometimes to like okay, this is when I need to go do this because it's important. Um, just that kind of thing. Now, do you find like Lexi mentioned that if you guys are is there like nutrition advising, yeah. like varsity food, like food do you get eat in the dining hall, like varsity, is there? Well, like, different school for my school it's different, like they don't really have, like there's like a salad bar, but then there's all these different things you can choose from. Mm -hmm. but, like, do you guys eat together usually, or? Oh, uh, I mean, probably every meal. Like, I don't know, but like, like if, you're in the, if you're in the calf, like one of your teammates is gonna be in there, yeah. so we, we sit together. But um, we do have a nutritionist, which is really nice. She like gives us like, well, basically there's certain things that we can't um, use, like certain protein powders, vitamins, stuff which like that. You can't use, but, yeah, because which is again, which is again, like that's an interesting, yeah, sort of thing. which is, I think it's because like it's safe for her to get drug tested, like certain things can show up on the drug test, mm -hmm. um, so we can't use certain um, protein powders, um, vitamins, like certain certain things you can't eat. Um, oh, and another thing is when we go out as a team. We can't get any fried food and we can't get pop. Always water. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's interesting, it's that high performance lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're just kind of trying to make it habitual and that it's everyone and that's kind of cool. I'm like, you know. How about you guys? Uh, this year we got a nutritionist who started up like a healing station for us after practices, after lifts, so we could grab food on the way to class. Mm -hmm. And she would have a meeting with us at least once a month to go over what we were eating and what kinds of things we should give them to eat at dining hall. Mm -hmm. After breakfast, we practiced in the morning, so we would go for breakfast after practice, and we'd all sit together and eat as a team, which I thought was really nice. Mm -hmm. And almost, it, but I think, it, but I do think as an old person, now, like it just mostly it's healthy. Like it's good habits for a lifetime. Because like in rugby, they're not trying to make you like skin. It's not like oh, you know, you make you know, they're not trying to make you skin. They're just trying to make you healthy, and that's like it's good to learn. You know, and it's hard because like it makes me don't like, know those things. That's good. Yeah, it's good that they're for me to hear that they're that that is Emily this. So um, athletics does have a nutritionist. We have like a little uh, pre and post workout shelf in a uh, refueling station in our new gym. Um, so occasionally, like once a week, uh, our nutritionist will make shakes and stuff like that for us. Um, they have a bunch of different like even just like gummies and stuff like that for before workouts because we usually have two hour practice in the morning and then an hour like right after. So usually we need something in between those two just because it's such a long period of time. No one's eating at 7 a.m. before practice, which is really nice, so. Just that for like life because they're all like the healthy stuff. <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably less because like we're not, I guess we don't have as many resources as maybe some of the people like the NCAA programs right. do. So um, we have a dietitian that's like shared with golf sports. Same mm -hmm. thing. Like fuel stations is what they're called at my school, where you can like get snacks on certain days of the week at certain times. Um, but I think we're allowed to get a little bit more in depth. They don't know what you can do at like some varsity programs, but like we have a guy.
to do before each like beginning of the season and then we'll do it again when we get back from winter break. We can do like our body fat percentages and we'll do like a bio uh, biodex or whatever it's called so we can get like where all of our fat is lying, like do we need to like focus more on our nutrition, do we need to be focusing more on our endurance, like it all gets put into like basically essentially all this data and then we get feedback based on that. Um, but like my school is a little different in the fact that we may not have as many resources, but we are like health related schools. So like we do have a dietitian that comes and like helps us and like tells us what to eat. And you know, we obviously we get certain meals on tour that will help us plan our best and do the best as possible. And we have like all like resources if you go to them, but they're not necessarily coming to us. And I think that's something pretty unique about life is like that it's not normally something that we're always given. It's something that we just kind of like go out and get, which I mean is something that you do in life once you've done graduated and whatnot. So, but yeah, not as many resources, but like they're there if you want them to. Now, did many, and this is, it's, it's funny asking this question because it's quite different for me than like six years ago, but do, do most of you lift weights before college and how has your lifting changed since you got to college? Because I think like six years ago, not that many high school students were like lift, doing good fitness lifting programs. Um, How has it changed? I, you know. So for, I, I lifted because I used to play football, so I did like a little combined football team and like, I stopped for like a year and then when I went to Cornupia, um, we do 6 a.m. lifts and you always have to be 15 minutes early. So basically like, <laughs> if you're on time, you're late. So always 15 minutes early. Um, I think the, I, the, in, in a good way that it seems like you have everything there for you. Like, what we're doing, um, what we're gonna do the next lift, like, and it, I think it's awesome too because you're with your entire team, like you're not by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and you have your um, strength and conditioning coach, in which she also does this, like post conditioning after like practice or um, after lift, and she also puts in like different like things for the backs to do mm -hmm. during lift at the end, um, and then things for forwards to do. So I think that's pretty. Do you like have you got the, do you have a lifting program like in your home right now? Do you have thirty eight? Uh yeah, so she puts a lift in for every single day. Um mm -hmm. I try to go in the morning, but like when I have work I have to go at night. Yeah. But it's definitely like you wanna to stick to going to the morning because I mean that's what you do like when, when you're there. Well, you're waking up at five AM. Did you used to get up at five AM to work out when you were sixteen? No, <laughs> no, I know not. It was that's very like, it was very like it opened my eyes, like, okay, this is life. That's not, this like, one. It's almost like the mental yeah. system of it, much of the physical, like. But yeah. it's something that I began to enjoy. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, we have lift tomorrow. Like, let's do it. Oh, that's so good. That's cool. I have it. So my team lifts in the middle of the day from 12 to 1 during our common hour, mm -hmm. which is the break between classes. And my lifts used to be, they were a lot slower, and I'd have to make up my own lifts because I looked through hockey. Mm -hmm. And they become more streamlined and more specific towards positions after going to varsity. Right. Like the bats would do certain things, flats would do a certain thing, props would do a certain thing. Now hookers have their own lifts. Mm -hmm. So there's different parts of the lifts that are very specified, which I really like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do your club do you do? At the club level we don't really have like lifts that are structured like that, but I think again within our own community we've created like time where we have a group chat where we'll be like, oh we're going to the gym and doing this, like come with us. And I know my freshman year I had no idea how to lift or anything about it. Mm -hmm. and I go with a team member and then now I get to teach the freshman how to do it and that's really cool. Um, and growing up with what Otto was talking about with um, the school resources, we definitely have a lot less resources because at U of R we fall under um, student organizations so we have no help from athletics. Um, so right now we're like fighting to get trainers in the game because like having school provide some sort of <coughs> to this because it is very much like the students are running the entire thing. Um, and so going back to the, the plan on the advice, I would say like don't be afraid to ask for help because there are people especially at this level, like you know a lot of people that know a lot of other people in the rugby community, so really take advantage of that. Take advantage of the people that you know, because there's always going to be someone that is going to be there to help you. Don't try to do everything on your own. You should, and on that note, with you part, if you're looking at, I remember a conversation years ago with Emily Record when she was coaching at Penn, was saying something about this. I was at some conference, but I wasn't paying attention because it wasn't relevant to me. Mm -hmm. I can remember that again, autumn cycle, but I can't remember other stuff. Yeah. And you can like this Title IX stuff that if like if more guys organizations have resources, you might be able to get trained. And also a little professional risk. Title IX refers to athletics, not club. But they like but you Your can but if you go to the association. But they can start if men's 
if there's like Mark said, they're getting more resources. You can make an argument also the concussion risk. Like yes. has people yes. done it before? Because people have fought this battle before. Yes. And so don't recreate the wheel. Like ask around. So we're someone's working. gotten a trainer for, for their club. Right. I know they have. We're working with our advisors right now to try to like make that easier. Because we have a lot of high risk club sports um, and we get like on a best support. Even just to like pay for certain training sports would be plenty. Because right now I'm just like going on like YouTube and like watching, oh, how to tape an angle, which like you can only do so much. So I, I think just having a little bit more support and definitely asking other people for help with that that know a little bit more about it is important. Also there's a the health risk. Yeah, yeah, like because people have done it. So try to like think of No, no. 
even when it is hard. So that's pretty cool. And life. Okay, my favorite one in life was probably, I really liked Seven Nationals this past year when we were in Houston. Even though I wasn't able to play, um, I was able to train the whole time with the girls leading up to it. And I was obviously like still doing my job. Like I was able to come and I was still able to like, literally I did every single training session. I got to play every single scrimmage. You know, I got to do all the things with my teammates and then getting to Houston and like maybe not playing as good as we know we could, but like sit, like just like the community we had brought together that was so different from even that previous year. Like we were a completely different team, completely different group of girls, and a completely like new culture. Like I think it was really cool to just be a part of a group that was like actually on the mend and actually like could play well when we wanted to. Obviously we didn't at every moment of that tournament, but like just being able to like win that last game and win a national championship is just something I mean, we've been working that's my fifth year. So like we've been working five years for was incredible. And then just to even see like how much respect my teammates have for me even though I wasn't on the field until it's really No, this is up can you guys still have more time for you guys to think of questions. <laughs> Colleagues that have faced coaching changes. So that is a, in some ways I'm like I feel like I'm on stage. It feels like the team is obviously stronger than the coach. Like it's almost like yeah. it's <laughs> great it's really important to have because coaches Change. Which is so funny because so much of these like you get recruited to teams that are, like you guys. the coach recruited you and yet, you know, it's like the strength of your teammates, you know. Yeah, I walked in after COVID had been like cleared and we were like to play and we're like, oh, new coach. Yeah. And it's just again. the strength of the team keeping it together, right? Like if you can't rely on the coach. So many people at life also want their hurrahs and then you're yeah, I, mean, like, I think a lot of people want their Yeah, because we have one for a week and then he quit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if he counts, but I think that's a funny story. Before we got our last coach, um, we had coached for about a week. We met him on Zoom, and then he was like, actually, I took a different position. And we were like, okay, so do we not have a coach? And they're like, JK, we have another one. Do you have the same coach? Uh, no. So my freshman year, we were coached by Meredith. Okay, right. Who's coaching at Bonnie Metro now. Um, so we didn't have a coach change, which is tough because we, we kind of like saw her leave our program and then do like crazy things and say Bonnie Metro. Attention. The gym is now being closed. So I repeat, the gym will now close. Thank you. Um, and it definitely was a learning experience. The coach we have right now, she plays for, or she used to play for the Rochester Renegades, which is the one who knows her first coaching experience. So definitely adjusting to like the different energies that the coaches bring. It's been definitely tough, but we're adjusting to it a lot. It's, it's a lot of learning, I think, as a team. But like what Katie was saying, the community, the team is definitely more important than what the coach brings to the team. I think just bouncing off there too, like, I don't know, this is my this is my perspective, maybe people have different perspectives, but like I didn't pick life necessarily because of the coach. I picked life because I mean the coach is an added bonus, but I picked coach I picked life because of the environment, the people that were already there to be there for the next four years, the people that like the, the school itself, the class sizes, like I think yeah, like coach unfortunately like coaching changes, like there's so many coaching changes and even though just like our head coach only changed once, we've had like different strength and conditioning coaches nutritionist, different, like, we've got a new athletic trainer every year, like, so, like, you'll always have staff changing, but, like, I feel like how you rally around those people and how you bring them into your circle and how you set that, like, standard, right, like, so, we're, this, we want to be the best in the country, we want the best staff in the country, so, we're going to have that standard for the people we're bringing in and the people that are coming in, and if they can't hang in, but, like, I think, yeah, it's the same thing, like, same thing, it's just find those people that you want to be around and how they're going to make your program, how, how they're going to grow and this is, again, this is my leading sort of leading question. Now, do all of you play the same position you played in in high school? <laughs> and how is your best of life? Because I know most people, like, it's amazing how like, you do, but a lot of people played all over, so I want to talk to about preparation in your position and, <laughs> um, like, how. So Everyone else, it's good to be able to play lots of positions, but yeah, you're I play uniquely skilled in a unique position. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I played... Most of them will play for a tight head when I was in City Island. Sure. Yeah, I think so. Like your property. I not play loose head. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the only thing different is like being a scrum if you're loose head. Um, but, I mean, being a prop is amazing. I love it. Um, we do I have one of them, so I have to draw all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, certain practices like backs and boards break up and then it's like forwards do like line outs and. 
that one thing. Scrums. Um, <laughs> no, we don't have no, scrums, but we also put scrums on a the rhino. Mons. Mons. Yes. Mons. Yes. Mons. yes, Mons and the rhino, the, the sled, the like sled. stuff like that. Um, but other than that, I mean, you kind of just build, you, you learn more when you, when you go into college. Like there are things I didn't know when I went to college and um, it was just awesome to learn that. Not only from like, I learned it from my coaches, but also like upper class. You know some good too, like, like some under the class upper class 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 for like problems yeah. are like, oh, right yeah. like they don't look a little tricky. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, older. you have uh, amazing teammates who definitely help you do it. So, no, because you played everything. Yeah, I played everywhere. I came in as a back three or a scrum half. Mm -hmm. And then I started out in the back line. My coach had me lock in tennis freshman year. And then I tore my hip and I got a little slow. So I started here and that. And I moved to the pack as a loose forward or lock. And then I moved back to the back. So I'm kind of all over. And I played, this season alone, I, we played four games. But I played lock, I played eight man, I played 10, I played 12. And I was always the main jumper. So I played everywhere. No, I'm just so it's yeah, so good cool. you call someone time. who can play. It's not like you jump it's in not time. a criticism when you play. It's really fun. <laughs> when you go small ball out, I'd have to go back, pass the ball out real quick. It was a lot of running. That was that was a lot of running. What was the that you play? In high school I started off playing book and then I got moved to wing for a semester and then I went back to blank. And then going into college, they kinda of looked at me and they were like, Oh, you have experience, like play scrap out. And that's where I've been playing now. Um, and I feel like as much as I hated being at Wake for that season, I feel like I've learned a lot. Barely <laughs> um, I, I feel like I've learned a lot about the sport just because there are a lot of forwards that I know that only know things about being a forward and being in the back line has really taught me about how the team would. It kind of broadened my thinking at team, which has been really helpful. So now I'm able to help out from both perspectives. I think being a scrum half in college, especially for a team that has a lot of new people, um, it's definitely made me a lot louder because this season we actually did a rugby IQ quiz like yeah. we had film the next morning and she sat us down and said here's your quiz like this is like your IQ she said I want to say like 75% <laughs> of the team got got a 40% yeah. like it, it was crazy but that's well, like some of it's so hard I just did the AR Amy are you watching no the AR quiz the AR did we have to sit yeah. referee some of those like those in goal and bounces there's there's I had a I had a kickoff that rolled, hit the tri flight, was bounced back in, and I went, I don't know what to do. Uh, is that out? Is that still in? I think I just called it out, but is it out of the track zone? Is it out in the fly? Oh no, I don't. So the, the rep rules, like, those are, but it's that's one thing I would recommend to you guys. Watching as much international rugby. Not only for watching rugby, but you hear the commentators, and they're so brilliant because they've like been raised in it. The way we like, I can probably talk, you know, American football better than rugby because you're inundated because you can turn on sports radio while you're driving and you just hear football, football. You know, the, just their knowledge about like you, the patterns, why they're doing things, and how to defend certain things. It's wild. Not only like, you played in like positions, but your position journey. Where are you even playing now? So I ended high school with OP and scrum half when Andy was ten there. But before that, and with all the other teams I played for in high school, I played all over, mostly in the backs. Um, obviously, freshman year, I was out for the first uh, semester, and then I played sevens all over the place. Um, I think all the games I played backs, but I still practiced doing some scrums and some lineups and stuff. Um, I don't think I ended up doing scrums or lineups in any sevens game, though. Then coming into this year, preseason, I was center all of preseason. The first game, our fly half got COVID, so I played 10. Um, then, like a day after that game, she said, you're going to be eight now. And I was eight for the rest of the season. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be in the spring or next year. Um, kind of, I'll play whatever position I'm put at. So, um, so if, when I started rugby young, I had experience at most positions, but I've always been a forward. I'll always be a forward. Um, so in my high school, I was usually a prop or a hook, um, depending on who we had around, and that's kind of still where I play, mm -hmm. depending on who's taking the games. So. Any of 
played around you. Yeah, I played everywhere, but mostly back. I started in high school. And then you do a lot of scrum half, which is cool. Yeah, I like do. It. Yeah, that's, that's odd. So I started as full back, um, and then I got to college, and I had no idea what I was doing because I didn't know, like, when I was in high school, we had run plays, we didn't do any of that. I just ran, honestly. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn all that, which was a lot of people learning the way and then in some of these other positions. So I started full back, and then I could play a full back and wing. And one of my first coaches when I got to college was like, you should be able to play a full back wing 10 and 9. And I was like, OK. So for freshman year, I was pretty much a wing. And then I started to be a wing full back. And then I started being like a, a wing full back 9, because that's what they want me to play at the USA level. And then I like, every once in a while, someone get hurt. And I have to go like 10, and I have to go 13. Like, it really just depends on who we have and what we have. But yeah, just being adaptable and being able to, because there is a lot of fluidity in a lot of the same positions. So as long as you're able to like, keep up with the plays and stuff like that, it's really, it's really not that hard. But yeah, I've played everywhere. So be adaptable. So basically the. Yeah. yeah. And especially like in sevens, you have to just play. Yeah, sevens are If everything. you play sevens. Sevens is everything. Yeah. You play any, it is such a funny. All right, now you guys have time. Do you have any questions? Um, my one question is like, was it like transitioning from 15s to sevens, like collegiately? Because obviously probably like lift change, conditioning change, um, for me, I mean, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that out there. Sure. Um, uh, but it, it's it's not as different. Like you still do, like you're lifting at the same times as you would in like fall season. And, but like obviously you're not doing 15s, you're in seven now, so you're coming up with the whole. Do the props practice? Do you practice sets? Yeah, we, we definitely do because like anything can happen. Like if yeah. one man it, it, it gets hurt, you're on net. So like that's something you always have to be ready for. Like, other than that, it's pretty si similar to what you do in fall, so. My team did it very differently last year. We made our lifts a lot faster and less on strength. It was be fast, be fast, be fast. And we did a lot more conditioning in mm -hmm. seven season than we did in 15s. For us, we kind of just shifted our fitness to just doing a lot more running and conditioning in that way. Um, right now, like, usually I have them send out like a lifting program or some sort of body weight, but right now we're just doing like run as much as we can, run like as often as you can. Um, and the men's and women's team are like having like competition to see who can run as four miles and so like that. Um, for me, our tra trainer does change our lifts a little bit to a little bit more um, like quick twitch, mu twitch muscles rather than like sh muscle building a little bit. Um, but generally the same. Um, our lift times usually stay the same, but it also depends because how our school does it. Like um, we're kind of more of a fall sport identified as that because we can't get priority lift times for both seasons right. just because spring sports obviously get priority sometimes so sometimes our lift change times change a little bit uh they're normally in the same area though uh we kind of end when our 15 season ends we get a few weeks off and then we have a few weeks of essentially just conditioning and skill work but just running for the last few weeks of the fall semester um, coming back in the spring, there's a little break, and then we kind of start our preseason up again. So, okay. like, um, well, it's kind of harder because like our seasons like kind of blends together. Yeah, because so. you guys do 15s in the spring. Yeah, like our 15s carries from fall, and then we'll go back after winter, and then we'll play 15s, and we'll do like a few weeks to sevens. But um, I would say the only difference, I mean, I think more of our differences are like kind of in like the preseason into like actual season. So like preseason, obviously like lots of muscle and then once we get to the like and you know running 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 and then once we get to like season it's just maintaining that running maintaining that muscle so we're not basically preventing injuries is what we're we're focusing on and then same thing like right now it's the beginning of our preseason so like just how much muscle and how much strength can we gain and then all the extra running and then by the time we get into game same thing we'll maintain maintain and then that like few weeks we get between 15s and 7s we'll just be a lot more running and like probably more explosive quicker lifts, but it'll stay, still be the same workload. They'll still maybe they'll throw in some extra running just because it's like only like 21 of us will train for like the actual team versus like all 50 of us. But everyone will play sevens because you know everyone needs better skills. So. This is not the group that needed to hear the running, running, running. <laughs> but there are some who need to hear the run because yeah, it's like people. So just my curiosity question. I'll ask each of you, since September 1st, how many times Broncos have you done? Oh, this is different for everyone. Uh, we have ran since this September 1st. Yeah, just to give it a time frame. Uh, we've only ran one, and then we'll run one more. Oh, well, I mean, first, my school specifically, I've ran one in the beginning, and we'll run one when we get back. But every time you go to the USA camp, they'll pretty much 
So for you, generally, like it's one Bronco, one time Bronco a semester. Yeah, one in the beginning, and then we'll try to get one at the end, depending, but like since we never really stop, we kind of are continuing to lift, we'll just do one, one, and then probably like one mid seventh season, and then one mid seventh season. So for the high school students, Bronco is a test, it's a running, it's a fitness test that you run 20 meters back, 40 meters back, 60 meters back, and do that five times. And that's like the USA Rugby uses that as the, like, the standard of fitness. How many time Broncos do you We've done three times a semester, but then we'll also do broken Broncos, so they use your most recent time, and she'll break us into groups. So you have, to, you have that long to do one rep and then rest until that time's over, and then you do another rep. All right. I'm guessing you already don't probably do that. I do that like for fun, just so I feel like they're really, <laughs> they're really good exercises. No, they're they're really good exercise no, they're 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 oh, yeah. And we do a lot of broken, broken Broncos during practice, but like sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm running a Bronco today, and like a couple teams are broken. But I think I've done like five. It is so funny. <laughs> uh, I think we've done one or two this semester. Usually we'll do two to three, and then it's a lot more broken Broncos for our conditioning style. Right. It's well, just you and Shu. No, I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> Since preseason started, we do one every single week. Oh, every oh. week? Every week. It's every Wednesday, so we start practicing. Bronco Wednesday. Bronco. What's the thing? It's just you and Shu. Do you know the flight behind running? Do you get faster? Or do, do you I, I know. <laughs> actually, I do. Like, my first one. I had a 10, 1030, and when I ended, my last one, I had a 922. Let's say, yeah. So, Sweet, that's awesome. Yeah. And then for those of you who knew, the broken Bronco means you just do like part of it and then rest. You do like you do 20, 40, 60, instead of doing that five times. You, take, so you just do that and take a break. Usually you rest really the same amount of time. So yeah. First rest takes you. Well, I've done like, when Emily and Annie have done Broncos, I've okay. done like 20, 40, and the rest when they do the 60, it's so like the 24. Or the mom, if your mom's one in company, or they can do the 60s. <laughs> but no, it is like, it's an interesting increment that you can. <laughs> <laughs> for the moms, when you do the bron Broncos with your daughters, you can break them up now. Well, also, you want to do the, the one in the five? <laughs> you know I hurt my hip playing flag? Last time I did my Bronco workout, I was running around the whole field. Today, today I was about to fight. It sounds like doing the hard stuff. It's only been, what, three months? Three months? I'm better. I'm 95% today. Why would it's like one day? Oh, it hurts. I had to step up down a hundred times. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it just, it just hurt doing your brother. Ah! Oh, I'm like, 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 Curfews, or like you have to have like, a certain GPA, or like you have to do like certain things. I know there are like a lot of rules that are supposed to be some. It depends on the team. Okay. Yeah. NCAA is. NCAA, you have to have like a 2.0, 2.5. You have to have a 2.5 to be able to play. Yeah. Like last year, my last fall, I had a couple girls on my team that weren't able to play because their GPAs weren't high enough. Mm -hmm. So they take that seriously. Um, <laughs> I think the biggest thing too is like you have NCAA rules, but you also have team rules. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those are things like you have to follow. So like we do dry season. Um, I was about to bring that fall. up. Yeah. And basically, um, I don't know if anybody has ever been to Quinnip yet, but we have a couple campuses, and if if you break dry season, like you get caught with it or whatever, um, we have to run York Hill. It's a huge hill. It goes all the way. It, you don't want to run it. Mm -hmm. You have to run it five times. Whoa. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down and and you got to like. Yeah, yeah, like you can't have any type of off season. Well, that's also, it's not the whole season. The whole season. Like, dark, when so Emily was a senior, like, the team agreed to go dark. So it's also, it's not always no, your yeah, coach. No, it's yeah, not, like, it's like, you like, confirm it with your coach, but, like, it's most of the team. Because I think they're It's have, like, like team and course. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to let your teammates out, like, and then yeah. it's also easy if your friends aren't going yet. You know, yeah. I think okay, it's like, um, so, like, Sundays, because, like, we don't have anything Monday. You're allowed to like drink alcohol and stuff like that. <laughs> no, they open half. No, literally, <laughs> open half. Um, <laughs> you drink all day Sunday. No. But, oh, and also like another thing is like you can't if you go to like a um, division one sport like higher performance, you can't post like anything with like beer around you like or you're in a bar or like or even a red solo cup in your hand like basically you're being watched like 24 seven. If you post anything like that, there's consequences. You get suspended. Um, yeah, but yeah, I just said that point. 
they're, they're watching your social media, you're unintentionally to them. Right, even if you're like, and I don't think it's as strong as I said, a college coach is a recruiting who probably looks at your social yeah. media to see if you're like, you could you speak to that maybe. Do you yeah, see? I mean, I think like, obviously if your social media is always being watched, just be careful what you post and be careful like, then social media, like even if you don't know someone, it's going to be how it's like when you see that person. So just be careful of that stuff. But I think like most of the rules just come from like generally being a good person, right? Like especially in my school, like the way it rolls is like, you know, you don't drink 72 hours or 24 hours before a game or training. Like obviously you don't want to be hungover, kind of like lift and whatnot. And like, just like, you know, you don't pick your teammates, you know, I don't know. It's just like general good things like that. Like if you're being a good person, you'll not, like I don't know. And I've never like not been able to experience college because of the rules. Like I don't think that there's something that I would be like, oh my gosh, these rules are ruining my college experience. Like it's just like being a good person. You can still have your fun, you can still do your things, but like they're just to keep you. So like if someone does, you know, trip a bed and gets like a zero point zero GPA or someone does get like, I don't know, got picked up by the cops, like there's not a lot of consequences, but it's just about being a good person. You're not gonna get there and you don't be like arbitrary, like yeah. you can only wear sneakers. You can only wear red every day. Like, you're not gonna I think too, like, you go up, oh my, I lost that. Um, <laughs> but the, it's, it's, it's like a job, too, like, depending on where you go, it's like a job. Like, like at our school, like, if you wear the wrong kit, you'll be in trouble, like, oh, that yeah. kind of thing. But it's not really like a good job. So, like, you want to show up to Target if you're working at Target in, like, a purple shirt. Like, mm-hmm. it's you just show up in the like, Walmart uniform. Yeah. <laughs> I got him back. Um, oh my God. <laughs> oh, like, okay. You might, see, you, might, you might see all these um, rules, but like you adapt to them. It's not like, oh my gosh, like, I've been taking away my life. Like, I mean, you may take our time of your life away, but, um, but for something it's something good. you adapt to. And I think, like, my school, when we play, like, we are required to learn <coughs> strong caps. I know. Is it because of the sponsor? Dad. No, it's actually because my coach, she said to me about, she, they used to not wear strong caps, and one of her players, like, her hair, like, her scalp came out, okay. and she was like, ever since I've made all of my players, like, it's for Friars, like, you have to. And that's a, but that's a, they're, that's your, they're a couple teams. Yeah. But like, like, whole Becky, like, like coaching, right. tree, like, her yeah. former yeah. players, their yeah. teams, yeah. but, you know. Those I never they wore strong caps. They did it in the proposition.
So I'm like, oh, like, we can come to school. They're like, oh, like, I have an EMT friend. Like, I'll just text them and like, let, let them know. Or, like, if they had a question about something within the league, I'm like, oh, I know someone that runs the league or like the conference. Um, and so it's a lot more like doing administrative things, which has been a huge change for taking school college. I would say it's like how, at the varsity level, how detail oriented everything is. Like, especially with my last coach. We spent so much time working on hip snaps for tackling, chopping feet before you put your foot in the box, things like speed off the ground and line outs, or snapping your hips in, the lo in a scrum, stuff like that that I never thought about before. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the stuff I never had to do before, but I never thought about it. Everybody kind of, everything else is the same, so. Now, do you find, because some of you are playing with private athletes to come for varsity programs? Do you find that they're coming more prepared to play college? Because I think you know, it's hard for like us high school coaches. Because it is hard when you're going to practice two, three times a week and half your team's never seen a ball before it is. Have you guys ready to play at that next level? Do you think the varsity, like, probably play the players from? Do you play the players from? Because you probably see some players from the West coming in. I saw like, some ballers, like people that just came out, like, ready like to Like AJ? Start, yeah, like just ready to start on varsity, so ready to be like a cap. Like they were just so good. And like, I think that was like something that was really frustrating to me because I wasn't used to like being that person, you know? Like that's a big conversation we have at life. It's like everyone comes to life and they're like the best player on their team. Or like, you know, they all, they, you all think you're not going to until you get there. And like, I think like just seeing some of those people that were like so good at rugby and just had such like natural gift for it. Um, I think it was impressive, but also like at the time it was a little bit like hard on myself, but I realized like quickly that the people that are gonna work hard and the people that are gonna put the effort in and the people that are gonna do the extras, like I was always the person on the field, always the last one to leave. Like those are the people that would be successful even if you're not coming from like California where Sorry. you're playing every, oh. yeah, <laughs> where you're playing every weekend. <coughs>
people that are new major. I have a small one, so I can, I can just name all of them. But obviously, even just knowing a handful of the people in your major at the school you go to, and building connections with professors, going to office hours, um, connections with TAs, LAs, whatever assistants you have in your classes, even just helps going forward and gives you more opportunities for the future. Um, I don't know if this is a good question, but I, I wouldn't say I regret going to like, especially going far away, Georgia's obviously pretty far from here. Like I have no regrets about leaving home and like, you know, obviously it was tough and I, I miss my family and I still miss my family, but like it was such a prime opportunity for me to go through hardships and learn and get better and get better as a regular player and as, as a human. So like me personally, I have no regrets of, of going to where I went or like choosing to go right away. Like, don't get me wrong, I told everyone I wanted to go to university because I wanted to be a chiropractor just so my mom would let me go there. But like, I had plenty of time to like grow and figure out that's not what I wanted to do and plenty of time just to change my major and to change what I wanted to do rugby wise. So like, for me, taking the leap was a no-brainer and I'm so, I mean, at the time it was a no-brainer, but like now I'm so glad I did it and I didn't change it. This one, don't be embarrassed because you what is your goal in rugby, your ultimate goal? I'll start. Uh, my ultimate goal So we can all cheer each of each, all of you on when you achieve this goal. Um, I really want to play in the World Series, get some sort of cap and maybe what game it takes, whether it's for 15 or Well, this, you know, 15 to 7, World Cup, that kind of thing. I just want to play that. I have to be the best friend player I can be on. Like, I don't have a set goal right now, just because I don't go to college for rugby, so there's like a little there's not as many connections, not as many camps to kind of stuff around, because this is kind of what we retire to. I think you should try to play ARU though. Like there are, yeah. again, I'm gonna yeah. offer my two cents. Like, <laughs> I think <laughs> being an old lady, I'll be my, my old lady advice. Autumn's already on her path. There's nothing else I can say. Just keep it up. Mm -hmm. Keep coming. Keep putting yourself out there. Do yeah. every yeah. opportunity. Yeah. For yeah. And also, again, this is my like. I'm just sort of not like a making secret like critical. Also, and I love glad you've had good coaching. Also, get some other coaching because yeah. that would make you know just or, like yeah. forward coach with the like the whole like you know. She did get very good coaching today. Are you as well? So she's no, but I'm just saying. Coaching. But yeah, yeah. that yeah. like try to even if it's a day clinic, just you yeah. Know, sometimes a little thing that might be a yeah. little different because we each of us coaches have our yeah. set way we coach things. But well, yeah, I would also offer like now that you have a connection, like you know me, like I know you, like if you ever see something anywhere else, or like I mean this goes for everyone and everyone in this room, like if you have any type of connection or like if you want anything like even if you know i don't know you just like women like i speak to you or you speak to me and like you're interested in a school that i don't know anything about like i'm willing to help you because right now autumn probably does know people at every like yeah. i'm so grateful you came because you could have easily blown this off because you're like you know like so this shows her nature and i do think you probably have a connection you know yeah. someone went to every school this i mean at this point if i don't i'll figure it out like i know enough people i know like my coach which, like they'll <clears throat> we're, like we're all about growing the game. Like even if like you're at a club level and you want to go find another club to play at, or you want to come to Georgia and find a club team to play at, like shoot, shoot your shot, reach out to me, reach out to another coach, reach out to anyone on social media. Like we'll help you find someone. And, and if you don't know them, we'll figure it out. That's your call. Um, for me, right now, I really want to help New Haven build its culture. There's, we've had a lot of like team dynamic and culture issues just because it's such a new team we're trying to figure out what we want to be and that's kind of part of the pull that made me want to go there because they are a new team and I wanted to help building that culture and be a team that people want to go to and strive to go to and things like that and just start on um, because like this 15 season we started winning a few more games than we had in the past and it was just really cool and it gave us an energy that we haven't had yet so mostly just building that team yeah. For me, it's kind of broad and hard to get to it, but it's definitely just growing the game. I know, like, personally, like, I've never been the most athletic person. Like, I know I'm never going to be the best person on the pitch, but as long as I'm seeing other people, like, learn to fall in love with the game, I think that's funny for me. Um, and I think taking over the boys team has really helped me see that because I see, like, this group of, like, freshmen that have never met each other before, that have never done anything rugby, and they're all, like, hanging out now. And it's, like, it's been really great to see that community kind of build from the ground up. So I just wanted to see that. Are you saying Rochester? Like a whole 
I knew to play at a higher level, I wanted to play in college. Right. So I thought, play in CAA. But I don't know where to go from there. Right. Now, this is interesting, because there is, again, we have the clubs here. But I've had, like, Laura Levine played for Penn State, she was a and she knew she wanted to play at the next level. So she moved out, you know, played law school, and she moved down and played for Glendale, and they were just national champs. You know, like, you know, like, it is, it's just a, and she's another one just worked and worked and worked. I remember because they used to do testing. And like at Penn State to start, you had to be able to run something. something. And running did not come easily to her. She was, you know, like, a, we would be at the track. And there's always going to be someone for any of these goals. Mm -hmm. I'd be, you know, I'm a little bit But like, there's always someone to run, you know, like, pace you and, you know, in the community. So, but that again, it's interesting. Like, it just keeps up, you know, there are opportunities out there. You guys are at the age, so that's cool. Like um, your for um, for me, my ultimate goal right now is to become the most fit I can be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been trying the last few months, but just continuing that. Well, that's good. And again, I think it's good. This is such a community. It's to support each other these goals. Like anyway, you can. So that's cool. You know, you guys have questions.
Yeah, yeah you know what? I'll, I'll put it up on our YouTube page. I so. So please use some resources, even if you just want to like sit down with one of us, like I will literally sit down and look up every school with you because that's what we need to do if I need to play with me for some school. But like definitely use them because I know I'm very passionate about growing rugby and I'm sure everyone here is. So please use us in your play. Yes, Jen, and you guys have been resources even as your college students to play at the next level. Like we know people have people in every city and every you know, like and you just get in contact. So that's the important thing. And it is just even at the next level, just putting yourself out there, reaching out to clubs. You need to pro you need you know, like are you playing this tournament? I'm available. You know, if you want to play. Yes, it doesn't matter what level you play as long as you play. Oh well, yeah. Maybe that's what's nice. I feel like there's like something that I tell a lot of people is that rugby is more of a community than a sport. Like you're not gonna be able to play rugby your entire life, but you're gonna be able to be involved in rugby at some point, mm -hmm. which is really great for the sport, I think. And I love that you're coming. so you're sort of like in the Get rep certified, get coach certified. Well, oh, there is a coach certification in Grand Island on the 13th for anyone interested. Oh, is there really? <laughs> yeah, it pops out. Okay. 13th of January, yeah. yeah. I only know because I looked it up and registered for it. And if any high schoolers are interested, we run camps at life all the time. So if you guys are interested, you want to come hang out, we run camps all the time. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. 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 Thank you, Sam.